Ginny Buckley. And I'm Gareth Davis, and welcome to the Weekend Holiday Show. Here's what's coming up on the programme. Looking out for ideas for days out with the kids, we look at the first guidebook for children by children. No kids today. Uh... Oh, Gareth. <laughs> How old are you? They've never had it so good. You know, I can remember when school holidays meant me wandering around the house, moaning, Man, I'm bored. I used to love school holidays. Well, that's fine, but I think, who was I listening to? Jenny, Jenny Eclair, actually, on um, Grumpy Old Women recently, and she said she thinks all children should be taken to the north of England and forced to be bored for four weeks. <laughs> and that would teach them a lot. And I agree with her, actually. It never did me any harm. Absolutely. Nowadays, school holidays have become the time when parents are really under pressure to keep their kids stimulated and amused. And if you're stuck for ideas, help is at hand in the shape of this. The very first guidebook for children... By children, it's called London Unlocked, and the grown-ups who put it together will help the children put it together. Emily Carr and Joshua Perry. Um, Two hundred children have contributed to this, guys. Welcome to the programme. Um, did you get a chance to do any of it, or did the kids just take over? <laughs> we actually did quite a lot of it. We went really? around <laughs> the button pressing and stuff. That was normally the kids, but we took a whole group of kids around, different kids, different times. We've both done all of the activities in the book. Josh, did what the children come up with? Did it surprise you? Well, sometimes the children do surprise us, but I think almost in a way our start point for this was it shouldn't be our ideas of what children enjoy. It is a book about what children like to do, and the best way to find that out is to ask the kids, and sometimes they come up with things that you wouldn't expect. One example which amazed us was Westfield Shopping Centre, for example, which is a book <laughs> I wouldn't have thought to What a in. sad comment on today, well, is children. Well, you may think so, but if it's what children enjoy, then it's deserving of going in a book as far as we're concerned. And were there any things in there that you thought that's going to be such a big hit, that will end up being the one everyone suggests, that actually they weren't that keen on? Um, well, I, the London Eye was a bit of a surprise. This, some of the kids loved the London Eye, and it was really high up on the list of things kids wanted to do. But actually, quite a lot of kids said they weren't so keen on it as well, and that was a, that was a big surprise to us. I think we ought to establish at the outset, what age group are we talking about? Because if we're talking about five-year-olds, obviously something very different to 13-year-olds. Well... We wrote it with children aged 7 to 11 in mind, and those were the children that helped us out with the workshopping and with the surveys that we did. What's been nice is we found that younger children, 4, 5, 6, that sort of thing, really enjoy the book, but they'll read it with their parents. And also quite a lot of adults have really enjoyed it as well, which is true. not what we were intending to do, but quite nice. I, did, I have to say, there's a great thing in here where basically you give um, every attraction a star rating, and at the back there's a ton of gold star stickers. Yeah. I mean, there's, that's the kind of the kids. The star's missing already in Gareth's coffee. <laughs> okay, he's been, he's okay. been putting them on. Stickers, yeah. <laughs> um, so, guys, um, when you came to um, dealing with the children, to talking to them, were, were you surprised by the amount of opinions they had about the things that they like to do? Yeah, well, I mean, I think kids generally know what they want to do. Um, we were, what was really helpful working with the kids is the sort of new ideas that they came up with, which, which were quite surprising. So, for example, they all really wanted it to be funny, so we made it funny. As you've just said, they all wanted it to include stickers, so we've made sure there's stickers in it, there's jokes, there's illustrations, there's photos. They came up with a load of brilliant ideas that we, we hadn't necessarily thought of. Yeah, one thing that really surprised us, actually, was the front cover. Um, we had a completely different front cover when we started the book. It was really much, more, much more elegant and less colourful. Yeah. And we workshopped with children. They thought it was boring. So we scrapped it. We did some workshopping with children about what they wanted, made up the best ideas, and the one you see is the one they picked. Can I just ask you, do you think children at that age are particularly demanding? Or do they become more demanding as they get older? I think children are actually a lot like adults in that sense. So children know what they want. But it's just that often they're not asked in the right way. So what we try to do with this book is not patronise children, but give them the power back and actually listen to what they say they want and then present that in a way which is how they would put it out if they were producing a book themselves, which they've done. I mean, so, for example, um, the only art gallery that's made it into the book is the Tate Britain, mm. and that's because they've got these really cool art trolleys that kids can go and use, they can create their own stuff, they can make things, and that's what kids said they like doing. So that's why it's in there. Let's look at the top five, shall we? We did. We've got a very a kind of a bit of a survey here of the top five activities. This is the top five from the book. Yeah. And do you want to kick off number five? We're coming in number five, we've got Hop on a Root Master, which I'm sorry, kids of all ages, is one of my favourite things to do as well in London. That's very undemanding of bus. Playing with the guns on board HMS Belfast. <laughs> I can feel middle class London quaking in its shoes. <laughs> Watching the penguins feeding at London Zoo. Again, ah, that's kids of all ages. Gosh. 
Number two, learn about London at the Museum of London. And the top five activities for kids in London, as chosen by the kids, is go eye to eye with the T-Rex at the Natural History Museum. It's quite interesting looking at that list. Some of them are quite simple things, aren't they? Do you think we have a tendency to do too much, to overcomplicate things? And actually, it can just be something as simple as a bus ride. I think adults, um, there's sort of some things that adults take for granted. Kids just do really enjoy, like sitting on top of a route master, going through London, seeing all of the exciting sights. That's the, well, when I took kids out, that was the highlight of their day in London. It's also one of my favourite memories of being a child is sitting on a double decker bus in Plymouth. You know, those are the things you remember, actually. There were two museums in there. Are museums still a tricky option for children? I guess some of them are. Some of them are quite tricky, you know, the ones that aren't interactive. But the museums that have made an effort to listen to what kids want, to, you know, provide interactive things, things that kids can make, create, climb on, walk through, do, they're great. We talked um, on the programme not long ago, a month or so ago, about a big campaign to actually make museums, mm. art galleries, more accessible to kids, yeah. to not have areas where it's, shh, don't talk, mm. don't run. Have, did you see that from as you were, as you were going yeah. around, as you were checking out what to put in the book? Did you notice a change happening? I think museums are all the time raising their game, and a really good example, which was on our list, actually, is the Museum of London. Mm. They're just about to have a 20 million relaunch of what they call their lower galleries, and that's sort of the history of London from the Great Fire of London through to the present day. And what's really striking, we've had a sneak preview, and when you walk around it, they've made a real effort to include interactive areas. So, for example, my favourite part is a sort of 1950s recreated living room. Great. And instead of just seeing things behind a glass pane, you actually play with toys from the 1950s oh, and brilliant. watch telly on a sofa from the 1950s. That's so really cool. like you're there. Very, very clever. We're going to have to wrap it up there, I'm afraid. But Fantastic. I do agree with you, Museum of London is one of my favourites. Yes. There's some great things in the book. And you know what? It's not just the kids either. Thanks, you two. Fantastic. Thanks. Thank you.